In this video, I will walk you through free response question number four from the 2015 AP Calculus exam. This question is primarily about slope fields and differential equations. Consider the differential equation dy dx equals 2x minus y. Part A. On the axes provided, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the six points indicated. At the point 0 comma 2, the slope is negative 2, so we should see a decreasing slope that is steeper than a 45 degree angle. At the point 1 comma 2, the slope is 0, so you should draw a horizontal segment. At the point 0 comma 1, the slope is negative 1, so we should see a slope that is decreasing at a 45 degree angle. This segment should not appear as steep as this one. At the point 1 comma 1, the slope is 1, so the slope should be increasing at a 45 degree angle. At the point 0 comma negative 1, the slope is 1, so the slope should be increasing at a 45 degree angle. This segment should look equally steep as this segment. At the point 1 comma negative 1, the slope is 3. So the slope should be increasing and greater than a 45 degree angle. This segment should be steeper than this one. Part B. Find the second derivative in terms of x and y. Determine the concavity of all solution curves for the given differential equation in quadrant 2. Give a reason for your answer. We can find the second derivative by taking the derivative of the first derivative. The derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of y is dy dx. However, we have an expression for dy dx right here. So let's make that substitution. Because we are subtracting a binomial, you have to put the binomial in parentheses until you do the distributive property with that negative sign. So this is it. We found the second derivative in terms of x and y. To determine the concavity of all solution curves in the second quadrant, we need to ask ourselves whether the second derivative will be positive or negative in the second quadrant. Here in the second quadrant, x is negative and y is positive. If x is negative, in the middle term, we have negative 2 times some negative number. So this will be positive in value. Since y is positive, then that means the third term of this trinomial will always be positive. And of course, this constant is a positive 2. So we have a positive, a positive, and a positive. In quadrant 2, x is negative and y is positive. So the second derivative is always positive. So all solution curves are concave up. Part C. Let y equals f of x be the particular solution to the differential equation with the initial condition f at 2 equals 3. Does f have a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or neither at x equals 2? Justify your answer. First semester, we learned that if we wanted to determine if a function has a relative max or a relative min at a particular value of x, we can either use the first derivative test or the second derivative test. But the first step for either one of these is to find out if f prime at the value of interest is equal to zero. For a function to have a relative max or a relative min at a particular point, the first derivative must either equal zero, or maybe it could be undefined, because it might be a cusp. We have an expression for the first derivative, 2x minus y. We want to know if there is a relative max or a relative min at x equals 2, but because of the initial condition, that translates into the point 2 comma 3. So let's just evaluate the first derivative at 2 comma 3. Hmm, 4 minus 3, but this equals 1. 
Notice this does not equal zero, and it is not undefined. Well, that turned out to be pretty simple. F has neither a relative maximum nor a relative minimum at x equals two, because dy dx at two comma three does not equal zero. Part D, find the values of the constants m and b for which y equals mx plus b is a solution to the differential equation. So here is the differential equation from the setup. In addition to this, we are told that y is equal to mx plus b for a particular solution to this differential equation. However, if I take the derivative of both sides of this equation, I get dy dx is equal to m. So now we have three equations to play around with to help us find m and b. I'm going to start with this one. If dy dx equals m and dy dx equals 2x minus y, I should be able to substitute 2x minus y right here. So now I have this, but I would love to rewrite this in terms of a single variable. So let's take mx plus b and substitute it in for y. So now I have this. Distributing the negative sign, I have 2x minus mx minus b is equal to m. My ultimate goal is to rewrite both sides of this equation in the form a constant times x plus a constant is equal to a constant times x plus a constant. Right now I have two x's on the left hand side. I can sort of combine these into one x by factoring the x out. So now I have this. So how am I doing on my plan to rewrite both sides of the equation in the form a constant times x plus a constant is equal to a constant times x plus a constant? Well, two minus m is a constant, which is being multiplied times x, and then negative b is a constant. So on the left side, we are good. On the right hand side, m is a constant, but I need a constant times x plus a constant. I can complete the form by putting in a zero x term, which does not change the value of the expression. So here's the key to the whole thing. We can use this model to set up a simple system of equations. The left side will only equal the right side if the coefficient of x is equal to the coefficient of x and the remaining constant equals the remaining constant. In other words, two minus m must equal zero and negative b must equal m. Adding m to both sides, we have m is equal to two. Substituting two in for m, we have negative b equals two. Dividing both sides by negative one, we get b equals negative two. So that's it, y equals mx plus b is a solution to the differential equation when m equals two and b equals negative two.